Hey everybody, this is Sarah with Your Ideal Self and I am out here on a warm November day and I am so grateful that it has finally hit a warm day in November because we have had a lot of dreary dark days and I know there are a lot to come, ah, but I'm going to appreciate this one while it is here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the takeaways that I had from being unemployed. Now, my husband would prefer I didn't use the word unemployed because this was actually a very exploratory phase of my life. So I was unemployed or transitioning jobs from mid-April to about the end of June 2021. This was a time when I had a lot of changes in my life in general. I had moved states. I had quit my job, which was the traditional type of corporate job in human resources and I had just gotten married. So I also had a lot of changes come about at this time. And when I was looking for a new job, I was looking for something with less hours and I didn't want to work from X time to X time. I wanted to work like 10 hours a week, 15 hours a week, 25 hours a week. And I wanted to do it whenever I wanted to do it. This is kind of the typical mindset right now that's happening in the world. I feel like a lot of people want to do this. And here I am, one of those people. So here are my takeaways from being unemployed slash transitioning to a new type of job. Firstly, I do want to say that I am a perfectionist and I get value from doing work. So this was hard for me. This might be the case for you too. But I also know that I am extremely lucky and I am so grateful that I was able to work this time and not have an income. So I was dipping into my savings, but I had enough savings to dip into. So I'm very fortunate that I saved up for my last job. The first sentiment I had when I was not working was that time was moving very slowly. It's like I had a whole day and I could do whatever I wanted in it, besides some parameters, and time was just slow. It didn't last too long that I felt time was slow um, because of course there are so many things that we can do with the internet. There are just so many possibilities of work to do, to occupy yourself with social media, jobs you can do. So it didn't take long before it was, <laughs> before time was slow to time being very fast. So when you don't have a set schedule of things to do governed by some employer or whatever, it was hard for me to set a schedule for myself because the deadlines that I set were my own deadlines that I set. You know, if I wanted to wake up at a certain time, it was me telling myself to wake up at a certain time. It wasn't because I had to show up to work. It also meant that I could plan to do something and it could take way longer than I wanted to. Like say I wanted to make some cookies. I had nothing stopping me for it to take me three hours to make those cookies versus an hour to make those cookies. But I do wanna to emphasize too that I wasn't just doing nothing. I mentioned meditation. So I still had a lot of things that were, you know, part of Sarah. I kept a Sarah schedule in a way. Now, I'm, I didn't wake up early every morning. I did end up sleeping in a lot of the time at the beginning, but I had my set things. Like I would always wake up and meditate regardless of whatever, whether I'm unemployed or what, I always meditate in the morning because that's just Sarah. I always work out every other day because that's just what I do. And I always journal at night. That's me. So I had these set things, but I also busied myself, like I said. So even though I was trying to relax and take a break while looking at new things, like new jobs, I was getting a little bit stressed about it. I was looking on LinkedIn, I was getting a lot of uh, messages from recruiters, um, I'm in human resources, and I do have good experience, and I was getting reached out by these people, and I would, you know, take my time to answer those messages. Uh, I would always ask them if they had part-time opportunities, and making sure that it was remote, because that was the kind of job I wanted. And so it was, it was a bit stressful when I didn't get that right away. It's weird because there's the me that's trying to relax and like Sarah, there, there's this voice inside my head saying, Sarah, relax. This is your time to relax. You're not going to be without a job forever. 
And then there's the other competing Sarah that's like, you know, everyone else is working. Everyone else is making money working. This is how people give value. This is how the world works. You can't just slack off like this all the time. And these were competing a lot in a war with each other, which was hard for me. I finally did relax some because I had to trust it was gonna be okay. And it was also helpful because my husband, Darren, he reassured me that my worth was not by me working. He reassured me that when I went to him on dog walks, because that's another thing I did, I went on his dog walks with him. He's a pet sitter, business owner, and he, he had me busy, whatever you wanna call it, but I was walking dogs. That was another thing I was doing. And he reassured me because he said, Sarah, I just appreciate you with me and you're, you're a value just being you walking with me. I'd rather you be here than not be here, which did have a big impact on me. Like just my presence, even if I wasn't feeling amazing or really thoughtful or reflective that day, because that's another thing. I think I have to be great or I'm not as worth it. He reassured me that it's okay. Just my presence is of value. So I started to enjoy myself as much as I could, but it was hard at first. Before I get to the positive part of the story, here's a cat pause, because I haven't done one of these in a while. So here is either Chroma or Will or both of them being really cute. Here's your break. And here we are, back with Sarah. This is the positive side of things. Now I was kind of looking for a job, but I didn't get a job. Um, I mean, like I had interviews, a few interviews, not that much, like just enough to make me feel like stuff was happening. So I had some interviews, but I never got too far in the process because it just didn't always feel right. So my waiting paid off. Um, part of what I did when I was not working is I was trying to reach out to my connections. That's what you do. That's what I've been taught, have meetings, connect with people. And I did that with my previous life coach. She's an amazing woman. And she and I caught up. And then within maybe a month and a half, she reached back out to me and said, you know, I know someone who might be able to use your HR skill sets. And she was in HR for a while. And she and I talked about this. She knows pretty much what she can know about what I'm capable of by just talking with me. And, she connected me with someone who needed someone like me, who, who herself was an individual business owner and she was working her own company and she was an HR consultant. Like she founded her own business and she was taking all these HR clients and helping them here, helping them there. And she needed someone like me to work X hours a week. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's 20 to get her work done. She needed that extra hand. And so I met with her on Zoom and she was such a warm person and I really enjoyed her. And I've had bad boss, I've had, a, I've had one boss before and she, she was not a good boss. So it was a big deal to me that this person wasn't a bad boss. Now I probably had low standards because I was like, you know, anybody could be better than that person, okay? But then she happened to be like a really good boss. Um, we just connected right away and she was a bubbly person and she ended up being someone who told me good things about my work and just very positive in general, positive disposition, not too hands-on, just lets me do my work, trust me, ask for my opinion. So connected with her and then I just started doing work for her and it started out slow, slower, um, but it was what I wanted. It was perfect and it wouldn't have happened if I wasn't not working and if I wasn't open to these new things. So that brought me to today in which I can do my work that makes me feel like I have value because that is always gonna be a part of me. I can't get rid of that. 
and then I can enjoy myself. And then also, on top of that, more recently, that same person that referred me to my new boss now, she actually needed help on her own social media projects. Yeah, and then she asked me to help her out. So now I have this other project going. I'm becoming the gig, gigish person that I wanted to become. So now I'm making money with uh, me and my husband's YouTube channel. That's monetized now. I'm helping my boss on HR work. And now I'm helping this other person on social media work. So anyway, I love how I'm living now. I can go out and walk a dog with my husband on a nice day or on a dreary day, whatever. I love it. So these are my takeaways and this is my experience with being unemployed or transitioning to a new gig type of work. So thank you for tuning in. If you like what I talk about, then subscribe. And I'll see you next time. I hope your day is as meaningful as you want it to be.